Cancer. Here is a word, one word, that can turn someone's life completely upside down. Cancer. A word so heavily associated with pain, fear, and anger. Cancer. Six letters long, but can change someone's life in an instant. Cancer. Not just a word, but a diagnosis. A diagnosis that started my journey when I was only 12 years old. A diagnosis that would happen not once, not twice, but three times. Hello. My name is Rivka Bookbinder. I'm 21 years old. I live in Minnesota. I'm the oldest of five, and I have survived cancer. Not once, not twice, but three times. <laughs> my journey started back in 2011. I was 12 years old and living a life like any kid would. I hung out with friends, spent time with family, went to school and did homework, and I was getting ready for my bar mitzvah. My biggest concern was if I was going to mess up my speech during my bar mitzvah. I was a normal kid with normal problems. Did a, little did I realize my so-called normal life would be completely turned upside down. There was no speech, there was no bar mitzvah. All that there was was cancer. It all started with intense pain in my right leg. Pain that was so severe I could barely walk. Pain that was explained away by a simple, oh, you slept on it wronger. The pain will go away with time. Pain in my mind that would go away, but the pain did not go away. It got worse and worse until a large tumor formed on the proper part of my leg. However, I didn't know it was a tumor. I didn't know it was cancer. How could I? I was 12 years old, a child, and the thought that it could be cancer never even crossed my mind. A biopsy was done and the results determined that my life would never be the same. My parents told me it was cancer. A cancer called MPNST, which stands for Malignant Peripheral Neurosheath Tumor. This is a form of cancer of connective tissue surrounding nerves. And from that point on, the rest is a blur. My mind switched to autopilot mode without me even realizing it. I was going through the motions, having the major surgery to remove the two cancerous tumors, doing the seven rounds of chemo and 31 rounds of radiation, all without thinking about what that meant. My hair fell out, and that's when High Lifeline and Rabbi Crandall, the director of the High Lifeline Midwest region, stepped in. I came home one day to a package with my name on it. Inside was a wig, a wig that had been curled just for me to replicate the curly hair that I had just lost. My parents told me that Rabbi Crandall was instrumental in giving me the wig and having it curled. This might not seem like a big deal to the average person, but to me, it was the whole world. This is just one example of what High Lifeline does for every and any individual that they come in contact with. Every single and every possible aspect of any need is thoroughly carried out. This was just the tip of the iceberg of how High Lifeline was going to change my life. High Lifeline is a phenomenal organization that helps kids who are going through a horrific experience feel normal. They create an environment where kids feel accepted and understood. I didn't know what to expect when I went to camp for my first year. I was not prepared for how wonderful the whole experience would be. I was finally introduced to kids who understood what I was going through, kids who I could talk to, kids who had the first same hand experience I had, kids who had their childhood stolen away from them just like me. I was nervous at first. I had never been away from home and I didn't know how I could be away, especially after all I had been through. I had finished all my treatment but was still reeling with what had happened. But within the first moments of stepping off the bus onto campgrounds, I knew I had found my home. I found a place where I could be me. Camp Simcoe works hard to accommodate each and every kid so that no one feels left out. While we are all different people from different backgrounds, we all have common ground that unite us in more ways than you can imagine. Some people might think that Camp Simcha is just a camp for kids who have cancer or other illnesses, and that is the focus of camp. But nothing could be farther from the truth. Camp Simcha is a place to be a kid, to do our projects like candle making and pottery, dress up, go on trips, eat delicious food, go swimming, go on helicopters, and make friendships that feel like you've known the person forever. While the illness is no way the focus of camp, there is a feeling of comfort and protection that is felt by parents and kids due to the top medical staff that they have at Camp Simcha. Every single person that is associated with Chai Lifeline is included. Every person puts their heart and soul into making sure that it is the most magical experience. The staff at camp create bonds with campers that last even when camp is, over, even when camp is over. Every single person that you encounter at camp leaves a lasting impression on one's time there. Rifki Schwartz-Zuckerman, the head of girls' sessions, <laughs> makes the camp come alive. From the moment you step off the bus, she is cheering for you along with all the other counselors and staff. Rifki is a mom, a sister, a best friend, a confidant. She is just one person in the grand scheme of things that make High Lifeline so spectacular. <laughs> 
Chi Lifeline has many trips and activities that get the whole family involved. Trips like Gourmet and Wish at the Wall. My mom went with me on Wish at the Wall and she was able to talk, relate, and even laugh with parents as they spoke about what it was like to watch your kid go through the cancer diagnosis, a treatment, a, an experience I can only imagine is hero horrific. Chi Lifeline makes sure to reach out and support not only the child, but the whole family. After all these trips, activities, and experiences, I had become a part of the Chi Lifeline family. I made friends and memories that still put a smile on my face. And in 2016, I was ready to take the next step forward and join the Camp Simcha staff. I was ready to give back to the place that had given so much to me. At the time, I was five years in remission and getting ready to graduate high school in June. But then I was diagnosed again. The cancer had come back a second time. I was back at the starting line of the race. My cancer journey was supposed to be over. I was supposed to be at the finish line, but for some reason, I had to start all over again. There were so many plans that I had that had to be put on pause because of this new tumor, but that didn't stop me. I wasn't going to let the cancer control my life. I may not have been able to go to my high school graduation ceremony, but I was still able to graduate. I received my diploma at a special honor ceremony prior to having major surgery. I may not have been able to go back to camp as staff, but I still had volunteers come visit me in the hospital. I may have taken a summer to learn how to walk, but that didn't stop me from starting my first year of college. I was ready to be free of cancer. I had beat it twice and I thought that was it. But then, less than a year later, the cancer returned for a third time. I wasn't ready for this. I didn't know how it was going to be okay. I wanted to give up. I was once again at the starting line with the finish line so far away. No matter what I did, it kept getting pushed farther and farther away. But Chai Lifeline didn't let me down. They came onto the tracks and gave me the extra help I needed. They were literally my lifeline when I felt like I couldn't finish the race. They stood by my side and cheered me on as I continued with my third round of cancer. My counselors, friends, and volunteers came to visit me in the hospital. They took me out for meals and activities. I got to go on Romeo for a second time. And then I was back at Camp Simcha. As soon as I stepped off the bus, I said, I am home. I am where I belong. High Lifeline is like the eternal light that never goes out. It burns with love and passion for everyone. When I felt like I wanted to give up, High Lifeline reignited my flame and fight for survival. High Lifeline's internal life gave me the strength, both physical and emotional, to go on. Cancer is a part of me, but it doesn't define who I am. I've learned that I don't have to hold on to all the negative and hard times that come along with cancer. I can take what I went through and keep and remember the good. That is what High Lifeline is. They are the ones who have changed my life for the better. I won't let cancer control my life. I look at life in a new way. I've chosen to find the good in each day. It could be something big like walking for the first time after major surgery, or something small like buying a bag of my favorite chips, something positive that will get me to tomorrow. I tell myself, if I can just find one positive moment that will get to me tomor tomorrow, I will be set. Because if I look forward to what's to come, if I look forward to tomorrow, the tomorrow will become today, and I get to continue my life, living my life. Thank God I am now cancer free. I have survived cancer three times and I'm stronger than ever. I am in school and planning on becoming an elementary education and special education teacher. I get to do this because I never gave up. I am Rifka Bookbinder and I am a survivor.